Today's review is sponsored by the new dating app, No Harmony. When you're not looking for a partner, just someone to fight with on a regular basis. Watch it, Alan. I'm shooting. The Pack, 2015. Okay. Go. I'm doing things a bit ass-backwards for my next two videos. I went into this movie thinking that it was a remake of the 1977 version of The Pack, which is a very good animal attack flick, but it turns out that these two movies just so happen to share the same name, and they just so happen to both be about wild dogs attacking people. But the 2015 version is not a remake of the 1977 version. It's just a coincidence. I still wanted to talk about both these films because that's what I originally intended, and I've got a lot of problems with this movie. So I figured we'd talk about this film first, and then I'd talk about the good one next week. Last summer, they were pets. Now, they are predators. The right move may mean survival, while each moment brings them closer to death. Just a heads up before we get going here, I am going to have spoilers in this video for the 2015 version of the pack. I do encourage you to check it out for yourself. True, I'm not the biggest fan of this movie, but you might like it more than I do, so I do recommend you check it out for yourself and make your own decision before watching this video. So with that, let's get into it. This is an Australian horror movie. The plot is very simple. You have this family that lives on a farm, which is about to be bought out by the bank because, of course, it's a common cliché. One night, a pack of wild dogs descends on the farmhouse, and the family has to fight for survival. In a way, this is a home invasion movie with dogs. I do respect this film for its simplicity. Simple idea, and they play it through. They just don't play it through that well. I've been diving into killer pet movies recently. I've seen a fair amount of killer dogs and killer cats. I'm a dog guy. I work with dogs in my regular life. I spend a lot of time with dogs, so I'm a big fan. But I like cats too. I'm not one of those people who gets all butthurt because someone prefers one pet over the other. Just let people love their pets, goddammit. Anyway, I'm a fan of animal attack flicks. For me, they are comfort food. They're, they're the kind of horror movies that I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy after a long day. And I've been fascinated by killer dog movies. As much as I love dogs, I still like a good dog-based horror film. The Pack from 2015 is not the best movie in the genre. I will give credit where credit is due. What I like about this flick is that it does not rely on stupidity to move the plot forward. The movie is predictable. You can pretty much guess what's going to happen in every scene, and it does rely on that convenient, oh my god, the phones aren't working because we need to be isolated. But the characters do make rational decisions for the most part, and there are ideas here that could have made for a well-done, suspenseful flick. The problem is, the film doesn't take advantage of its ideas. I am very forgiving when it comes to budget and various other limitations when it comes to independent films, low-budget films, micro-budget films, you get the idea, as long as I see effort put into the movie. Whether it's a simple idea, a complex idea, a silly idea, or just weird as hell. As long as the filmmakers take advantage of their idea and do everything they can to make the best movie they can with the budget they have, I'm a happy guy. The pack from 2015 
is a prime example of what I dislike most in movies. The first thing I'll admit is a bit of a nitpick, but it's just the tip of the iceberg of the problems with this film. The movie is called The Pack. It's about a pack of wild dogs attacking this family. Now, there are two really good kills towards the beginning of the film where the pack rips apart some people. There are only two kills in this movie, but that doesn't matter as long as the suspense is good throughout the rest of the flick. But after the first two kill scenes, the family only has to deal with one dog at a time. Now, one dog can still be a decent threat. One dog can fuck a person up. But the pack doesn't really come into play throughout the rest of the movie. Now, I understand that when it comes to filmmaking, it's difficult working with animals, and having one dog on set at a time probably made things easier. But since we never see the pack all at once, the movie doesn't work. You could switch the dogs out with anything. Hell, you could have had this just be a simple home invasion flick with people, and it would have had the same effect. But the biggest issue is that so many scenes build up to nothing. This is a horror movie that focuses more on suspense than anything else, which I love, but the suspense is rarely there because so many times throughout this flick, the movie decides to do nothing instead of have a suspenseful moment. There are a few good scenes where the dogs feel like a legitimate threat, but those few scenes are surrounded by moments that build to nothing. Things are set up in this movie, and they go nowhere. Here's where we're gonna have spoilers for the rest of the video, so this is your last warning. Spoilers in three, two, one. Okay, here we go. Here's the first example. The mom is in the house. She has hidden her kids in the pantry, and there's a dog wandering around the house stalking her. At any moment, this dog could see her, and then she's in trouble. But she tricks the dog into a closet and then closes the door. But there's no chase in this scene. The dog just wanders into the closet and then she closes the door. But uh-oh, the dog starts howling, so the other dogs are gonna come, right? Wrong. Everything's fine. There's another scene where the dad is on the roof of the vet clinic because it's established that the farm doubles as a vet clinic. We had a decent scene in the clinic where the dad deals with a dog, but again, it's bogged down by all the nothing. Anyway, the mother and the kids are trying to sneak over to the clinic so that they can climb on the roof and be safer. So they're walking through the night as quietly as they can, and then a dog sees the kids, so the mother tells them to keep going, and then she runs in the opposite direction back towards the house. So you think, okay, she's going to distract the dog so her kids can't escape. And guess what happens? That's right, nothing. The dog doesn't chase anybody, and everything's fine. There are two things established early on in the movie that look like they're going to be set up for some suspenseful scenes later on. First of all, it's established that the younger son has his own fort, which is sort of this thing of tunnels, kind of like a maze that he made himself. You know where this is going to go. One of the dogs is going to be chasing someone through this little maze. That never happens. The brother and sister do end up in this fort to hide from the dogs, but not once does a dog chase them through this maze. There is one moment where 
a dog is walking on top of the fort, but the sister and brother are able to get out of this maze without any incident. Like I said earlier, this farm doubles as a vet clinic, and it's the son's job to collect the piss from the animals. Now, there's a moment in the movie where he grabs a jar of dog pee before they leave the house. I like this. Like I said, the characters do think, and you think, oh, yeah, he's gonna use that to distract the dogs. But this leads to nothing. He splashes the piss on the ground, and we never see the dogs get distracted by it. I guess we're just supposed to assume that it happened. Trust me, bro. Henry, come on, they're coming. Quick. That's the majority of the film. Things are built up, and then there's no payoff. The kids are almost to their dad up on the roof, and they end up bumping these cans that they have hanging around that they're using for alarms. You would think this would lead to the dogs chasing them, but nope, they make it to their dad just fine. The family has this dog that disappears, and at first you're worried that this dog was killed by the pack, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So you're thinking, okay, the family dog is gonna come back in at some point. Like, maybe the mom is cornered by the pack, and then in some big triumphant moment, the family dog returns and fights off the other dogs to save the day. Nope, that doesn't happen. The dog disappears, and then at the end of the movie, the dog comes back and is perfectly fine. Crawling through the dust and it's holding you trust. I don't fucking get it. Okay, guys, I have this brilliant idea. We're gonna make this suspenseful horror movie, but we're gonna have no suspense, and we're gonna have people rarely be in danger. Once again, spoiler alert, but I think this movie would have been so much more effective if one of the family members died. There are only two kills in this movie, which is not a problem at all. Not every horror movie needs a high body count, especially when you're focusing more on suspense. But with this movie giving us so little, Killing off one of the family members would have helped, but it never happens. God. You guys alright? Nobody's hurt. We're fine. Sophie, Henry. Yeah, we're here. The few moments that do have some kind of payoff are ruined by all the scenes that build up to nothing. What's the point in making a suspense movie with no suspense? where the danger doesn't feel dangerous, where you have scenes that build and build to everything being okay. That's essentially what this movie's about. A pack of wild dogs invade this family's house and everything's fine. Falling from the sky. It's a shame. This movie could have been better. But next week we're going to look at the 1977 movie The Pack, which does this idea right. But until then, let's get to the Grindhouse rankings. We've got a body count of two. The kills are both dog attacks, and they are well done. The movie could have used one more kill. If one of the family members died, that would have amped up both the stakes and the tension. I do like the fact that this movie had a simple idea, it just wasn't used properly. And I do respect that the characters in this movie do make smart decisions here and there. It's nice to have a horror movie where the characters think. The tension is done poorly. There are so many moments where the suspense is ruined by having nothing happen. There are a few good scenes, but they're all ruined by the disappointing scenes. The movie puts in setup, but no payoff. There are moments that could have been suspenseful and scary, but the movie chooses to do nothing instead. It just feels like there are no stakes in this film. The danger never feels dangerous. I'm giving this a 2 out of 5. There are some ideas that could have worked if the film just took advantage of them. If you are curious, I guess check it out. You might like it more than me, but I just couldn't get into this one. As always, I want to thank all of you for continuing to watch and support this channel. Please leave a comment down below. Let me know some animal attack films that you found disappointing. 
This is the Maniac, here to remind you that the Grindhouse will never die. Oh no, a wild dog just broke into my house. Oh, don't worry, he left. Everything's fine. Anticlimactic, right? 